so far we've looked at examples where we've calculated probabilities. But now what we can do is actually work those problems backwards. So given some probability or some percentage, we can also find the number that would produce that probability. So for example, let's shade the region or shade these graphs to match the given problems. So for instance, we want the probability that x is greater than something to be a probability of 99%. So there's some value that if we calculated the area under the curve greater than that value, that probability would be 99% or 0 0.99. Similarly, similarly, we could find some value that if we calculated the probability less than that, the total area under the curve would be 45%. So what we're saying is there's some number, we don't know what it is, and the, the area under the curve should be 45% of all the total values. So given the percentage, how do we find that point? Let's refer back to the last example, or two examples ago, where we had the hospital with its cutoffs for unusually high or unusually low birth weights. Committees recommending special treatment for birth weights in the lowest 3% and highest 1%. So we want to come up with the new standards. What's the birth weight that's too low, requires special treatment? What's the birth weight that's too high, and require special treatment. So essentially we want to find some value A so that the region below that is 3% and we want to find some value B such that the region above that is 1%. So we have two different questions to answer. We want to find the probability that X is less than A is equal to 0.03 and we want to find the probability that x is greater than b to be 0 0.01. So given these percentages, what numbers make those cutoffs? So we can go back to StatCrunch, access the normal calculator. We're going back to the previous example with birth weights. So if we look back at example 3, we could get the mean of our distribution, which is 3,420, and the standard deviation, which is 495. So now we want to find these two different values that result in this given probability. So we want x to be less than or equal to something, and that probability should be 0 0.03. So as we start typing that in, this box becomes blank until we compute and we get a value of 2,489. So when we put in the probability, StatCrunch will find the value that completes that calculation. The other result that we want is for x to be larger than some number and that probability to be 0.01. So we can change this to be a greater than statement and update our probability to be 0.01. Click Compute and we get 4,571.5. So we calculate our value for A to be about 2,489.0, and we calculate our, our value for B to be about 4,571.5 grams. So under these new recommendations, birth weights under 2,489 or over 4,571.5 would require that additional attention, some additional treatment. So this type of technique where we're given a percent and find the cutoff score for that um, can be helpful for identifying both percentiles and quartiles. So in example six, we want to go back to that same hospital information we just used. Find the birth weight of a baby who is in the 85th percentile of birth weights. So when we say the 85th percentile, the 
that means 85% of birth weights are below the birth weight of our randomly selected newborn. So whenever we have a percentile, if you're in the 95th percentile, 95% 95 of scores or values are below yours. If you're in the 50th percentile, 50% 50 are below yours. So this means we would want to find the probability that x is less than a. So there's some cutoff that when x is less than that, our probability ends up being 85%. So 85% of values are less than this value a. Going back to StatCrunch, we're using the same mean, same standard deviation, but we want the probability that x is less than some value to be 0 0.85. So what value is at the 85th percentile? And in this case, it's just a little over 3,933, or about 3,933 grams. So our value for A in this case is 3,000. 933 approximately grams. If a child, a newborn is born weighing 3,933 grams, they're in the 85th percentile because 85% of all the other values are below that cutoff score. So we can also use this to identify the interquartile range for birth weights. So keep in mind the interquartile range is the difference between Q3 and Q1. So we need to find Q3 and Q1. If we take that difference, then we'll end up with our inner quartile range. So when we look at quartiles, what we're doing is splitting up our data into four groups, each one representing 25% of our data values. So Q1 is the same thing as the 25th percentile. 25% of all our data is below that value. Q2, which is the median, is the 50th percentile, and Q3 is the 75th percentile. So what we need to do is find the probability that x is less than some value a is equal to 0.25, the probability that x is less than some value b is equal to 0.75, and then we'll take this value b, which is the third quartile, minus a, which is the first quartile, to get our inner quartile range. So flipping back to StatCrunch, we're still using the same mean and standard deviation. We want to find the cutoff score that puts this that uh, is the 25th percentile. So we want x to be less than some number that gives us a probability of 25%. And that value is going to be 3,086.1276. And then we want to find the same thing for the 75th percentile, which is going to be 3,753.8724. So our value for A, which is the same thing as Q1, the 25th percentile, is 3,086.1276. And our value for B, which is the same thing as the third quartile, is 3,753.8724. So then we can find the IQR by again taking the difference of Q3 minus Q1, so subtracting these two numbers, gives us an interquartile range of 667.7448. So we were already given the standard deviation, we can also calculate the interquartile range by finding the first and third quartiles as an alternate measure of spread for this distribution.